This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys and welcome back. Well guys, today we're going to talk about UV mapping. Uh, everybody hates it, but it has to be done, right? Well, uh, I've been doing videos uh, on Maya since about 2014 and every time there's a new Maya release, I get the question, can you do a tutorial on how to UV map in 2014, 15, 16, 17 and so forth? Um, main reason is that people find this a very uh, complicated topic and uh, have a belief that if they know what all the individual buttons are, they will uh, figure out how to UV map. Well, I'm not quite sure about that. I think it's more about uh, understanding the concept and the purpose of UV mapping instead of knowing all the individual buttons, okay? Uh, we're gonna look at the new features in 2017 briefly but for the main part this video will be for those that are fairly new to Maya and are struggling with UV mapping and I will explain uh, what it is what's it's for and how to do that okay so that said let's uh, jump in here we go okay guys so UV mapping in Maya 2017 all right well it's kind of funny I did a video on UV mapping in 2014 15 16 and now 17 the reason for that is that I get a lot of questions about this topic. People find it difficult, they hate it, and so forth. So what typically happens is they ask me to do a video on the new interface because that will solve all the problems. Well, to be honest, I'm not quite so sure about that. I think it's more about understanding the whole concept of UV mapping. And I personally only use a few options in the UV interface and we'll go through them. I will uh, mention later on in the video what's new in 2017, but that said, we're gonna do a quick run through of UV mapping in general. Uh, yes, again, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a polygon cube. I'm gonna try to do this fairly quick, okay? So I got a cube, but that could be a sphere, a cylinder, anything. And this object has a number of faces, as you can see, all right? Now, let's say I want to give this a color. Well, actually, it already has a color. It's gray. And where did that gray come from? Well, Maya does a, a default standard gray Lambert material, which is a shader. And I will show you. I'll just uh, click on this and go to Lambert 1. Lambert 1 has been applied to the cube, and now it's gray. Okay? Now, there's a difference between shaders and external 2D texture files. A shader is, you could compare it to a bucket of paint that you drop all over your model, okay? So I want the cube to be gray, I kick a bucket of gray paint all over it, and it's gray, fine. Um, it doesn't really have any boundaries as to where it can go and where it cannot go, so that's how it's applied. But what if I want to apply, let's say, a wood texture to this cube, for example? I would have to keep in mind that the scale is correct and I would probably have a seam somewhere. Now, why would I have a seam? Well, if I take a, a 2D JPEG off of Google, it's a picture, okay? So how do you wrap a flat picture onto a 3D cube? That's the whole deal, right? Well, that's where the UV uh, mapping comes in. Now, first of all, if we look at this guy, we need to project. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we got it selected in object mode. We're gonna go up to UV, and we have a couple of options here. We can do automatic projection, we can do cylindrical, planar, spherical, and so forth. Now, planar is looking at flat surfaces, spherical is used for spheres or balls or round, cylindrical for cylinders. I typically try to go with automatic, so we're just gonna click on that. <clears throat> and what happens is you got a number of planes, or you could even call it like cameras pointing towards my cube. So top, bottom, left, right, front, and back. And with all these snapshots taken, if you will, uh, Maya comes up with a suggestion of what this cube looks like, okay? So we're gonna go to UV, we're gonna go to UV editor, and let's see what Maya came up with. So I'm gonna move over, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And behold, Maya came up with six faces. whoop de doo okay? Now, what's the deal with these faces? So what do I do with it? Do I need to uh, 
pile them up, stitch them together, or what? Well, that all depends on what you want to do. If you want to apply a uniform texture, let's say a 2D file of a complete black surface, pretty much the same deal as your shader, right? So you wouldn't have to stitch anything. But what if you want to have, let's say, the top and the sides to be yellow and the bottom to be black? Well, in that case, it's a different story. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our model here and we're going to go to face. And as we hover over our model, we can see that this is our top face, which is located down here. OK, so I'm going to click here, right click, go to shell, select it, hit W and move it over here. OK, so that's my top. Fine. So what I want to do is I want to stitch these sides onto the top there. So I'm going to right click and go to edge select that and as I hover over you can see that the corresponding edge is over here okay so I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna go up to move and sew it stitched this together I want the same to be done here and that's the corresponding edge so I'm gonna click on that hit G to repeat last command click here G to repeat last command and click here and G to repeat last command now, and to be complete, what I can do is for the bottom face, decide to stitch it here if I want. Okay. So move and so. So this is my complete UV for my cube. So I'm going to right click and go to uh, shell. And in order for this to work, it has to be in this right top quadrant, which is called the zero to one space. Okay. So I got it selected and I'm going to go up here to polygons and I'm going to go to layout. And when I click on layout, Maya will position it to the best of its knowledge in this area. So if I have multiple objects, it will space them all out so they all fit nicely together and there's no overlap. Okay, cool. So that's the easy part but what if it gets a little bit more complex okay so what we're going to do is we're going to shut this down and we're going to alter this a little bit we're going to right click go to face control e to extrude r to scale in g to repeat last command w to pull up control e again to extrude r to scale out w to pull up G to repeat, W to pull up again, and that's it. So we got a little sloped area here. We got this thing going on and so forth, okay? Now, let's say that this is gonna be some sort of table or whatnot, and if we right click and go to face, all of this, oh, not that, all of this is gonna be, let's say, I don't know, wood. And everything uh, above that will be, I don't know, stone, okay? So what you would do in a situation like that is you would right-click at an object mode, select the whole thing, go to UV and automatic projection. Once again, that's what I like to use. We're going to go to UV and UV editor. And now we got a few more parts to consider. So let's move this a little bit down here so we can see what's what. Okay, and we'll zoom in a bit here so we can kind of work with that. Okay, so what I want to do is identify my top. Now, already I can see by hovering my mouse here, that's my top. Okay, so right click shell, hit W to move it. I'm going to right click and go to edge, select that one, go to move and sew, hit G to repeat there. G to repeat there and G to repeat there. And then I have these edges. So let's try this. But now I'm in trouble because I have this face right here. Uh, let's see that one. But I want one here, here and here. And this is all stuck together. OK, so what I need to do is I need to cut this. So I'm going to right click and go to edge and I'm going to take one two, three, four edges, and I'm going to go to cut UV edges, okay? So now if I right click and go to edge here, I can go to move and sew. And here, hit G to repeat, and here, hit G to repeat. 
So this guy is now complete. This is our top, as you can see, all right? And the cool thing about it is that the seams are in a natural position because if I go to these two edges, that's already on a corner, so that is already an edge. So that's cool, okay? So we've got this guy. We're gonna move it out of the way for a sec. And let's look at the guy at the bottom. Now, a couple of ways you can approach this. We can do the same thing as before. Start down here and then work our way up, side, side, side. Or you can decide to wrap this around and that around, etc. Now we're gonna follow pretty much the same workflow we had just now. So this is our bottom. We're gonna move it out here. We're gonna right click go to edge. We're gonna go to move and sew. Repeat that here, hit G to repeat, G to repeat, G to repeat. And then we're gonna go up here and there we have that same situation again, okay? So again, we have to move in, take these edges and go to cut UV edges. And now we can right click at an edge and we can do one here. Move and sew, G to repeat, G to repeat, okay? And this is now one shell. So what do we got left? We got these guys, right click edge, okay? So we're gonna go with Move and sew. We'll do one here, one here, and one here. We're gonna right click at a shell. We're gonna select everything, and we want everything nicely positioned in this area. So we're gonna go over and we're gonna hit layout. And it will neatly position that for us. Now, if this is all you have, and you don't want these two to be too close, you're just gonna select this and move it up a little bit, okay? So, not too difficult. Now, what if you, uh, let's see, we'll do one more. What if you have a cylindrical object? Um, I don't know, I have to zoom in. And you're gonna wrap something around here and there's gonna be a seam in an area. Um, let's create something here. I'm gonna create a cube and we're just gonna scale this in and pull this up. And it's just, it's not really a, an object, it's just for demonstration purposes, okay? All right. So, um, I'm gonna take these faces out. So I'm gonna go into my attribute editor, control A, and I'm gonna set caps to zero. I'm gonna right click and get a face and select the top and the bottom and get rid of it. Okay, so let's say we want to have some kind of 2D texture applied to this guy here. We first need to UV it, okay? So I'm gonna right click at object mode once again. I'm gonna to go to UV and instead of automatic projection, I'm gonna go with cylindrical because this is very clearly a cylinder, okay? It's gonna do this projection thing around it. And then we're gonna go up to UV and UV editor and let's see what we got. Well, that works nicely. What it has done, right click shell, is it took this thing. It's not exactly inside my zero to one space. So what I'm gonna do is go to layout, do that for me, and there you go. But what I wanna figure out is where is my seam at? Because I now have the opportunity to hide my seam behind this column here, okay? So let's see where the seam is. So I'm gonna right click and go to edge, okay? And you can see it's over there, and I don't want that, right? So I'm gonna go to my model here, hit four for wireframe mode, and that's the one that I want, okay? And you can see it's right there. So I'm gonna right click at the edge, I'm gonna select it, and I'm gonna go to cut UV edge. Where'd he go? Right there. So now if I right click and go to shell, I got one here and one here. So I now need to take this edge and glue it over there. So move and sew. Right click shell, there we go. Polygons and layout, 
to position it correctly and now it is in place all right so just to recap it's important to decide uh, number one if you need to uv at all now when do you need to uv you need to uv when your model will be deformed okay so if you create a character and it's going to move and stretch and all that kind of stuff it absolutely has to be uv'd do you need to uv everything that goes into an animation not necessarily that depends if you are creating a completely static object let's say a rock okay a rock is sitting stationary on the floor it's not going to deform it's not going to move and uh, you know you could technically texture that without uving unless you want to have a very intricate uh, rock texture on it then you would have to uv okay so that's that um, when you uv and number two make sure that any faces in your model that you're not going to see um, get rid of them because anything that's in there will add to your poly count and then we also have to UV it and if you don't have to you don't want to okay now uh, thirdly is uh, when you decide to um, structure your model try to do that in a way where you keep UVing in mind and not necessarily how an object has been created in a real world I received a question, uh, how do I decide to add additional uh, polygonal objects to my model? Do I do that based on how something is created in real life? Uh, no, I try to strip any model down to basic polygon shapes. So cylinders, uh, spheres, uh, cubes, and so forth, okay? Because that's easiest to UV, all right? So that is pretty much it. And um, I promised that I would uh, tell you about the two, um, well, mainly the two new functions in uh, my 2017 in the UV editor. Well, one of them is the symmetry tool. Uh, let's see, what is the new icon here? I think it was this one. Yeah. So what this does, and with the current model, it's hard to demonstrate, but Let's say you have the UV mesh of a human face, okay? If that's projected, typically the left and the right side will not be the same. Now, what you can do there is, uh, you can also approach it from the tool menu. You can go to tool, you can go to symmetrize UV tool, option box. You have the option to have a U line, which will be a vertical line from top to bottom. And once you select that, you get this little um, circle and you can brush over one side of the mesh to get it similar to the one on the other side. And if you want to do that from top to bottom, so horizontal, you switch to V, okay? And then the other one is this guy here, which is the uh, layout UVs. Now this button does pretty much exactly the same what we've been doing just now, and I'll demonstrate. We'll just uh, right click and come on. I gotta get out of that tool yeah so uh, I got this let's say over here I want it to be positioned nicely so I'm just gonna hit that thing and it's gonna position that similar to what I did with the layout in here okay so that is pretty much a quick recap of UVing um, let me know if that uh, covers your needs. If you have any questions, please let me know. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.